I truly do love it when you stop by. I'm John Zadar. I am the host of On Top and Hot, and this is April 19th. It is Wednesday, which means tomorrow, being Thursday, I'm going to be doing my live streaming event, Me and Lily Star. That's my favorite co-host. We like to talk to our viewers for about an hour live. We're talking to them about stocks they're interested in. They bring us stocks maybe they're doing due diligence on, want to look at them together, or maybe they want to share a stock they've been holding, hoping we're going to find light at the end of the tunnel. Fact is, you probably know the stock better than we do. So if you didn't find any, we're probably not going to find it either. But we'll gladly look with you. That is tomorrow, Thursday, every Thursday, 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, when that market bell is going off. All right. What we do on this show is we like to look at hot OTC and penny stocks. We're looking for stocks that have potential. And here of late, I've been trying to shorten my videos down. I've had to cut stuff out because I want to give you more information. I don't want to just do one stock. So what I'm doing is I'm giving you a streamlined version of my due diligence. Cleaned up version. I'm doing due diligence all through the day. And when I come to a page over here, I will go through every one of these tabs and I'll read the information. But there's a lot of information, for lack of a better word, is just worthless as a day trader. For example, if I come over here to float and I see that they've got a float of 200 million, well, that's just an average float. It's not going to have any real effect on the charts. But if I see a float of 10 billion or 1 million, yeah, that could definitely have an effect on the chart. I consider that relevant information. So what you're getting is the cleaned up version. I'm only going to show you what I, in my opinion, consider relevant information, which is why I always suggest you do your own due diligence behind me because I'm not sharing everything with you. So I've got some stocks lined up. We're going to try a new format here. I'm trying to make this smooth and informative and short. So there's a lot of juggling here and I'm hoping this is going to work. Let's jump on into this. First stock we're taking a look at is a penny stock on the NASDAQ. This is ticker CJJD, China Jojo Drugstores. This is a Chinese pharmacy that sells medications online. And I think any pharmacy should have a happy name. So I like China Jojo. Jojo finished the day at just under $1.10 and about 62% gains. Now, when I find the stocks that we're talking about, the very first thing I see is the chart. I don't look at news. I'm not looking at the OTC markets. I'm going through my scan looking at charts. So that is the very first thing I see right there, a four hour chart. That is what I'm scanning. And this is what I saw. I seen an opportunity here. At least I thought so. First thing I do is I say, why did this fall? Why did this fall from $4.53 down to 61 cents? Is there a recovery possible here? So I go see what the problem is. I found the problem and it's fixable. And I think it's going to be a nice, sweet recovery. Now, looking at that one hour, 20 day, you get better view of it here. You can see she dropped abruptly at the very beginning of today, all the way down. And she is now working her way back up. Now, I think she's going to come back up. I'm not sure if she's really going to make it to $4.79 maybe $3.10. No, I didn't just pick that number out of the air. I'll show you where I got that. It actually came out of a news press. But what I think is going to happen here is it's going to take some time before it actually happens. This is not going to rip all the way up to that 200-day SMA. It is going to stay down here. Maybe it climbs very slowly. Maybe it goes sideways. But when the 200-day SMA on the one-hour chart, most likely, gets close to it, that's when it'll start to break out. And that could take a while. I don't know how many days, but that's got to come down closer. Now, it's possible it could rip, but not most likely. So what sort of information did I find important to retain? Well, why did it drop and why should it recover? Well, yesterday they announced that they were doing a $7 million registered direct offering. They were going to be selling shares at $3 and 10 cents a piece. An offering for $3.10. Folks, the price was $4.53 and they're going to put an offering up for $3.10? That's a slap in the face to the investors. So they panicked and everybody started selling. So why do I think it's going to recover? The news that came out today. 
<laughs> the company saw what happened. China Jojo Drugstore announces the termination of the previously proposed registered direct offering. Eh, bad news, we're not gonna do it. Look what we did. We thought we could make some money and nobody's gonna buy our shares at $3.10 if the price is 61 cents. So they dropped it. So I do believe it is going to come back. I also noticed that their financials have been growing. They've been consistently getting stronger year after year. I like that about them. Also want to point out the fact that they've got a low float. I don't know what exactly it is, but it's under 3.4 million. That's a low float. So it's very important. They got a lot going for them right now. But is anybody paying attention to them? Yeah, they are. Look at the relative volume today. Jumping from about a quarter million shares, a quarter million, up to 117 million. You're looking at uh, roughly 460% jump in her relative volume. So there was a lot of attention paid to this. It's probably going to be a slow recovery, but I do believe it will come. Next one we've got here is ticker BBBY. You know who Bed Bath & Beyond is. Of course you do. Bed Bath & Beyond has been on the verge of a bankruptcy and they've been fighting it really, really hard. Well, Bed Bath & Beyond finished today at 46.5 cents with almost 35.5% gains. She too is on the NASDAQ. Again, I found her by looking at the charts. I know what her circumstance is, but I don't really look at a company. I look at the chart. And if the company's got something to back the chart up, then I look at it. That's why I'm looking at Bed Bath & Beyond right now, because of that chart right there. Now, it's not the 200, but it is the 50. She had been falling very hard. You could see that. She hit a low bubble here. She's bouncing off of that right now, and she's crossed over her 50-day with fluidity. Nice, even ride up. And look at the volume over the last three days. It is incredible. Looking at that one-hour 20-day view, this time we're over the 200. We have banged on it hard. Lots of volume. You can see. From right here, the volume has been picking up. There was hardly any volume back here, relatively speaking. She is getting stronger and stronger consistently. And right now, she is on a climb. What other information can I share with you about this? Well, she's making money, right? They are streamlining right now. They're trying to narrow down how much they have to operate with. But their financials are falling. They tell us over here in a recent filing, this is a Schedule 14A. This just came out. They tell us here, we had previously announced public equity offering where we raised $360 million in additional capital. And those funds were used to both cure a default in our credit agreement and to repay certain amounts of our credit facility. So they had a public offering selling shares to the market to us and they made 360 million dollars and paid off some debt Woohoo! glad we were there to help you guys then they go on to say in addition to that we've launched an at the market equity program and we're now seeking shareholder approval in a reverse stock split to continue to fulfill our business goals so first they put a lot more shares on the market and they dilute it so that they can get money from us to help pay their bills. We're helping them. Now they're doing a reverse split, taking all those shares back, putting them back in the bank, and they'll probably put them back on the market and resell them and get that money back. So yeah, they're fixing their problems right now at our expense. But as you saw, the charts got heat. The charts got momentum. If you're not playing it for a long hold, if you're not after that shareholder value and you're looking for the momentum, now might be a time to look at it. They go on to tell us that they are targeting a fleet of 360 Bed and Bath Beyond stores and 120 Bye Bye Baby stores. So that's their plans right there. And what sort of attention are they getting? Uh, oh my God, I had to look at that twice. That is over 10 times her normal volume. Now that's no big deal compared to the last one we just looked at. That was over 400 times her normal volume. But look at the numbers we're dealing with. We're jumping from 87, 88 million shares a day. No, this is never under the radar. To almost 900 million. We are just under a billion shares being sold in this company. 
volume, volume, volume is the key to any trade. Just like real estate, location, location, location. Yeah, this is getting a lot of volume right now. Next stock we're going to take a look at, you may have heard of. This is ADHC, American Diversified Holdings Corp. This is a uh, I don't know if I should call it a cannabis company or not. They do work with CBDs and they've got other products as well. They finished the day at 0038 with just over 38% gains. This one is on the OTC market. She's on the pink tier. She is current. She's got both those green ticks I'm always telling you about. A transfer agent verified and a verified profile. Now, these are very important, especially if you're getting on a pink on the OTC market. Why? Because pinks don't give you a lot of validated information. Even their financials are disclosures. They aren't even looked at by a CPA. What these two ticks are is validated information that's verified behind the scenes, a lot of it. So if you're going to get into a pink on the OTC for a long hold, get as much validated information first. Make sure you see these two green ticks. They tell us right now she is a shell risk. This means she's in business. She's got something she's doing. She's supposed to be making money, but they're not. Warning, warning, not a good sign. So again, I found this by looking at the uh, charts, and this is what I saw. She's had some humongous bounces here, folks. She's jumping from about 002 up to 0065. So you've got 300% jump and an abrupt fall. You had another one here going from about the same thing, even higher this time, to 0072. So we're now at 350, 380% jump before she came down. Now, you can't see it real clear on this because it's a snapshot of a chart, but I can tell you that right here, it is the 5th of April, and that is when she fell. And now she's bouncing off of that 200-day SMA starting to come up again. Now, I'm always curious, why did it fall abruptly? Was there bad news or was it just simply profit takers? Well, before we take off, I want you to see that one-hour, 20-day view so you can see what's going on. She had that huge ride up. She came back down underneath the water like a rubber ball, bloop, 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 and up onto the top, floating up there. And she is sitting there right now everything looking like she wants to take off. So naturally, I want to find the reason this stock fell on April 5th. Is there a recovery here? Well, I found a news press that came out April 5th, but it doesn't explain why the stock fell because it's good news. It's great news. They have been talking for a couple weeks about putting these agreements together, trying to close a deal and they closed it on April 5th. They tell us here that the company entered into a comprehensive alliance with three different companies, Green Globe International, they're on the OTC market, ticker GGII, Hempaco, that's ticker HPCO, and a subsidiary of GGII, Green Star Labs. All three of these companies are cannabis companies. The reason for the deal, ADHC wanted to make use of their distribution networks. Get their CBDs out there. This is going to help with their shell risk problem. This will start bringing in revenues. And then six days later, we got more good news. The company enrolls Choice, announcing initial orders. So things are happening. They should have revenues coming in. Now, I was curious about this, so I jumped into their most recent financial. This came out January 31st, 2023. The first thing I noticed was up here. Indicate by checkmark whether the company is a shell company. They say no. Well, I've been through these financials and I did not find any revenues anywhere, so I don't know where they're hiding them. But I found one other piece of information I found interesting, and it's at the very bottom. I mean the absolute bottom. And this is where you'll find bonus information and a lot of financials. It's called subsequent events. These are things that happen after the filings are done and they just squeeze them in. So they tell us here that a judgment for default has been issued against the following defendants for the return of shares improperly issued. And when you add them all up, there's 325 million shares here. ADHC anticipates having these shares canceled and the fiscal quarter ending April 30th, 2023. These should have been gone already. When you jump over here, I don't see them di disappeared yet. We got outstanding shares of 1.1 billion. 
So this is roughly 30% of the shares. Now, I don't know if we'll actually see a change in the float, but we are going to see a change across the board of 30%. So what was the relative volume around ADHC today? She did have more. She jumped from roughly 17 million shares up to just under 22 million shares. Our next stock comes from the OTC. This is Blue Water Ventures, ticker BWVI. This is a biopharmaceutical company that deals with psychedelics. Now, not too long ago, they changed operations. They used to dive deep into the ocean looking for shipwrecks. But now they dive deep into the mind. So they finished today at 17 and a half cents with about 32 and a half percent gains today. They are on the pink limited tier. This means they are late on one or more of their financial filings. And this is a big deal. You've got to get those caught up in a set amount of time or they'll just yank you off the OTC and put you on the expert market. When they're on the expert market, their shares cannot be bought or sold. Once they catch up with their financials, they'll come back onto the open market. Everything will be as usual. Now, their situation really isn't as bad as it sounds. They have filed their financial. That came out at the end of last month, their annual report. With every annual report, you must put in an attorney letter as well. Since you don't have a CPA looking at your disclosures, you have an attorney look at them. And we're waiting on that. Once that comes in, that should probably go back to pink current and that in itself could be a catalyst. So let's take a look at that chart. This is our four hour, six month chart. Doesn't look too good. We had a high six months ago of 29 cents, a huge fall down to a low of roughly nine cents. And she is bouncing off that low, working her way up, but she's still under the 50 on her four hour chart. Volume is getting pretty thick here right now. But if you look at that one hour, 20 day chart, things are looking a little bit better. We had a big fall from 18 cents down to that 8.8 .8 cents. Bouncing off that low, she's crossed every single SMA and she is now on top of the 200 day SMA right there. I mean, right on it, it is a perfect setting. So what did I learn about this company? Well, I learned she had some big hot news come out today. The next generation of mental health treatment Psychceutical Biosciences has created a novel topical ketamine delivery. The company is developing a topical application of ketamine targeting to relieve post-traumatic stress disorder symptoms within minutes and negate all the side effects. Folks, this is huge. The company is developing a new and unique mode of administration that has the potential to completely revolutionize the psychedelic mental health space. With a staggering 53 million adults living with mental illness in the U.S. alone and current treatments for mental health still using 1980s technology, millions of people have been left with no viable options to treat these debilitating diseases. However, there is a growing interest and demand for the use of psychedelics for mental health treatment. Psychceutical, they are developing a topical cream administration of ketamine, which is designed to allow the drug to directly target the brain and bypass the GI tract and the liver. This process is believed to eliminate the hallucinogenic effects of psychedelic drugs and significantly reduce the toxicity and the adverse effects of these compounds. Currently, the ketamine treatment market is limited to intravenous or oral delivery. While effective, the cost of treatments like ketamine infusions can be as high as $400 to $2,000 per session. And they want you to come in two or three times a month. So this can add up. So this could be a very big deal. There's lots of people with mental illness, lots of vets out there who could use something like this. What was the relative volume around BWVI today? We had a little increase, jumping from $66,000 to $78,000. Johnny, what is our next stock? That would be ticker AUR, Aurora Innovation. <laughs> this company deals with self-driving vehicles. They deal with big freight trucks. They deal with small cars. Maybe you want to hail a ride or maybe you got a whole bunch of freight you want moved. So ticker AUR, they finished the day at $1.68, right around 7% gains. They are a penny stock on the NASDAQ. So this is how I found them, identifying the chart. She looks horrible, right? She has been falling all of this time, starting at a high of $3.27, hitting a low of $1.08. Right now, she's at $1.63. But she has come around underneath, and she is breaking through that 200. And there's your 50-day SMA coming through the 200 as well. 
Now, normally I don't like to see this 200 rolling down like that, but seeing this 50 day cut through it, I think that's going to give some strong backing to the price. Looking at that one hour 20 day looks a lot better. She cut through the 200 back here. She rode under it again and now she's pushed off. She's gotten on top of her 50, jumped onto the 20, jumped onto the 9 and she is bounding. Hitting a high today of $1.69 and locking it up right there. We got lots of volume here. We don't have a problem with volume on this stock. So what sort of information did I discover with this company? Well, she hasn't got great revenues. You can see that they've been falling. We started here at 26 million and we are down to 2 million right here. However, when I jumped a little deeper, I found their assets were incredible. Look at this. Their total assets are at $2 billion. Now they've got $262 million in the bank, but they have a total of $2 billion in assets and total liabilities is only $217 million. So they're really a strong operation. They just don't have a lot of revenues right now. What else have we got here? Well, we've got Catalyst. That's what we're looking for, right? They were talking back here at the beginning of this month about getting their Aurora driver terminal up. Well, they did it today. Aurora debuts industry-leading commercial-ready terminal for autonomous trucks. They tell us here that the company today has launched its first commercial-ready terminal for autonomous trucks. This is in South Dallas. The terminal, located in Palmer, Texas, deploys autonomous trucks pulling freight for Aurora's pilot customers, including FedEx, Schneider, and Uber Freight, between Dallas and Houston. They are using a network of terminals to house, maintain, prepare, inspect, and deploy the autonomous trucks between destinations. Terminals will also be key to keeping customers' trucks on the road to haul freight 24-7, 365. They're never going to stop. You don't have a driver in there. They're just going to keep these things running. And this is going to be big. You've got these things being set up right now between, uh, wh where did they say that was? Houston and Dallas. And they're setting these up and they're going to be stretching further and further and further. So I think this is a big business on the cusp of where we are going. What was the relative volume around the company today? Again, another one that's jumping. Good to see this. We were at 1.2 million for the last 30 days. And today we did 1.8 million shares. So you got about a 30% increase here, folks. So we've got lots of stocks here. All have got decent charts. All have got a reason to run. But of course, I did not cover all the information, folks. I'm just looking at stuff that is catching my attention. I don't know what's going to catch yours. So most definitely, follow behind me doing your own due diligence. Remember, the more you know, come on, say it with me, the more we're going to grow. <laughs> See you, folks.